So, welcome fellow dappeners and everybody else to yet another live interview show with Become a Fearless Father, the first one with the new strategy of going every Thursday, 9 p.m. CET, and I got the pleasure to have Josh Brown with me. Thank you so much for joining. Glad to be here, class. We're going to have tons of fun. This doesn't happen very often, but immediately we get messages before we even start Glory rocks. <laughs> people just getting ready to to listen to you and hear all about you get some more details i told the better get ready because we're going to get raw uncut live as always like oh, i can't oh, yeah. take back what i just said <laughs> so that's how i roll no exactly. no safety net here we just go yep it's going to be a lot of fun anyway man let's dive right in right okay yeah go for it and um, I usually don't go as deep from the beginning, but I thought, you know, why don't we smack the ball straight out of the ball court and just yeah. go with this one? What, according to your vision, purpose, and life, mm -hmm. what is life all about for you? For me, it's family, friends, and um, just getting them every day it really is just that experience of um you know getting every moment out of it and teaching my son that same thing um i have a four-year-old son um and he's the world to me and so is my my wife and my um parents and in-laws and everybody and you know i think it's just experiencing every moment being in the moment and teaching my son the same things um because so many people get lost now in you know, social media and, mm -hmm. um, you know, glued to their phones and not teaching their kids to like, you know, using the old thing, stop and smell the roses, mm -hmm. literally stopping and smelling the roses and, you know, learning as much as you can along the way too. I mean, one of the best things you can do is learn about the world, learn about your fellow humans. And, um, you know, I say it to my, um, students all the time, you know, look for those teachable moments. You know, and that that's really what all rolls into. If you're looking for the teachable moments, if you're experiencing every moment, you know, when you show up to the pearly gates, you're like, OK, I, I got as much out of this place as I can. What's next? You know, not wanting more. Exactly. Yep, I like that. That's a very important message for for our kids. Right. And oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, that that's the things that's one of the big things that, you know, when, you know, we knew when little James was coming along and we said said to each other, you know, we don't want that child to be the one glued to the electronics and, and they have their place. I'm, I mean, I'm a technology teacher that I, I, trust me, I know technology has its place, but not every, every second, not every moment on television. Like, you know, I think that the hindering things and like showed him like he, like his speech is so eloquent for a four-year-old. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks he's like six because we've, the whole time talk to him and like, Oh, you know, Hey, look at this, try this. Oh, this is how you say this. Can you try it? And being engaged like that as a dad and um, as a parent, you know, is, it's just so, so important it is. And um, for the development of also yourself, because you, you know, you, if you want to experience life, watch a toddler. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything is new, but they have enough to tell you about it. You know, and like just hearing him describe with like such passion the mm. colors of a painting in front of you is yeah. spectacular. I, I just love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm reading again. I'm going to show it again. But this book, Shine, it talks mm -hmm. exactly about what you say. Oh, yeah. The I kids, mean, the five-year-olds, they shine. However, we don't. We've been letting us just be covered under so much mud and and opinions from others, etc. While a little, oh, your toddler doesn't care, all right? He just freaking excited and bang, oh, passion. If you wanted a raw, live, raw interview, I'll go ahead and put him in the seat, and there's no filter. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Filter is taught, and, and that's one of the things that, as, as a parent, you should teach your kid to, you know, know when to say stuff and when not, you know, but it's a learned skill. And, you know, so you do get those. If you ask their opinion, they're going to tell you. Plain and simple. Make something they don't like to eat. They're going to tell you. 
Yeah, exactly. So if, so if you do something accident, accidental, they're going to tell, tell the, you know, like they're going to tell everybody, you know, and it, that's, that's what I love, love about them. You know, it's, it's so un uh, like unfiltered. It's so raw and they just experience every moment. Like he's made me a better man mm -hmm. than, you know, I thought I could, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's True, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I heard somebody saying, I love that. And I keep getting it in my mind. If you can't have the truth, don't ask a toddler. For their <laughs> no. You, you go home crying. Right? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't want, you don't want that coming at you. It's it, cause it's brutal. If they, uh, either shower you with love or they'll shower you with, uh, you know, a, a firm reality check of, of yourself and, um, exactly. you know, and I love when they get little obsessions on things too. Like they just mm. got to do whatever it is, you know, and it's like their thing, you yeah. know, it, it, that's spectacular to me. I love it. No, absolutely. And how beautiful is it that that can go from this to this, right? Oh, yeah. It's like one second they hate you, the next second they love you. Just, just, mm -hmm. it's just pure raw emotions. I love it. Look, man, yeah. Gabriel always said, hello, Gabriel. Thanks, man. I love it. Hey, thanks for being here. Awesome. Gabriel. That's awesome. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate and it. we're going to get to know Josh a little bit more, man. Share uh, share with us, before we continue with the rest, share a little bit about your background. Um, I actually have kind of a odd background coming uh, coming along the way. Um, in, in a nutshell, um, I am my, I grew up in a Navy family. My dad is um, retired Navy. And mm. I grew up in a household. Like if you follow my um, YouTube channel, channel shameless plug jk brown official um the uh it's a lot about content of video and and things i grew up around it you know um he was a he retired as a master chief in the navy and a combat cameraman photographer's mate so i grew up around you know photography videography and it always sparked my interest i always loved watching it and you know i went through school i went um went to um college and, you know, continue to explore the arts. I actually have a degree in um, technical theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I specialize in um, lights and lights and um, scenery. So, you know, like having the correct environment and the lights, and everything like I was fiddling for this like crazy to get them all right. You know, because I did. And, and, <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that offline class. I, got well, you. I appreciate we'll that. I got you. Um, but you know, it, it's sort of, it, that's why it's morphed into this business that's maturing right now. Mm. And along that way, um, you know, I was in sales for, for a little while. I, I actually sold heavy equipment for a little while and, you know, I, I, all those things sort of added to the mm. repertoire until ultimately for about the past decade, um, I've been a technology teacher, um, teaching specifically, um, video production and um, actually I've been teaching graph video production I've taught graphics photography and actually construction um, I have um, I have a hobby of doing woodworking so I was doing that mm -hmm. and I really over the past 10 years honed the video production end but having to teach it with zero budget which is fun you know if you come in and are like I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and I have a hundred thousand dollar budget if you can't make a hundred thousand dollar YouTube channel work you got yeah. a problem if you have a $250 budget, you're a rock star. It's, yeah. you know, it's very different. And I, I love doing that. So seeing my students get the spark of that, and I've had a number of them go to top universities now mm. for film and video and all, is like an extra pat on the back. I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. And um, I've, over the past couple of years, I've helped business owners with that aspect of creating their content, creating their courses, because that's part of being a teacher is doing that. I have a master's degree in education. So I know how to build curriculums. I know how to build content and tying it with that video piece. So people aren't just floundering, figuring out like, oh, you know, what am I, you know, how, you know, they, people have the ideas of how to like create their content for their channel or their course or ads and there's a lot of there's a lot of fluff out there and there's a lot of really complicated things mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be so the, the way i instruct things is to literally break it down to um anybody can really understand it and um because in my classes i'll have anywhere from the students that are operating at a you know very low educational level all the way up to mm -hmm. those that are operating at 
college and above. And mm -hmm. you have to differentiate that. So I, I do the exact same thing when I'm teaching people, you know, in, uh, for their business, how to develop content or, um, you know, build their class is the same way teach to that level because you have to be able to give enough of a notice to the, the people that are building with the very low um, threshold when they start mm -hmm. and those already at a threshold give them enough of a, te of a teaser to stay with you mm -hmm. and um, all these things along my life's journey leading to this um, have, have leaded have been there and this summer was when we really went in um, went in um, as uh, Tony Robbins would say you know burn the boat like all in for jk brown official nice i like that that, that was Amazing. that was a little bit longer than elevator speech unless you're doing you know empire state building yeah no there's no elevator speech here I man you get all yeah. the time you want until it's 60 minutes and then i cut you off <laughs> yeah then, then it's done okay no man, it's all good man we got plenty of time so uh you mentioned you got uh, a son four years old name is james mm -hmm. if yep. i heard that correctly yep he has, he has the best name his name is james brown James Brown, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It's one day Hi. off the finger. <laughs> and you mentioned that you're married. How long have you been married for? Um, we have been married for man, you just put me on the spot. You yep. did it. You did it. Mm, I knew I, I knew you were gonna ask that, and I took it. And um, it is nine years. Nine years. Awesome. Man, we forget that. That's okay. We'll make it up later, <laughs> hopefully. I know it's like I got I know I got, I got the birth dates down and everything it's like it's one of those on the spot you got to think about like you know which right. one like dating for so long because um my wife and I actually met when we were in um in high school actually mm -hmm. we were both we were both theater geeks which if you are one you're allowed to call yourself that okay. um and um you know ended up becoming friends later on and then uh you know as they say history is history yeah exactly well see the good thing is for those days we have Facebook and they show it and i think they even send you a reminder so you <laughs> gonna be good yeah exactly. my life runs on this that's why it has the huge battery pack on the back it has I mean, nothing to do with social media it is all literally for me to remember stuff and take pictures exactly exactly yeah i can understand that mm -hmm. so let me ask you this because you said something very powerful and very important right like uh, tony robbins says you know you burn your boats get stuck on that island and it's like there's no way back it's just forward right all in baby all in <laughs> exactly so how do you transition from teaching to like you having a what they call secure job right <laughs> and how do you go from that and then making that complete shift burning your boats and then just going full out into jk brown official well i i think particularly and this is something that um you know, people who are, you know, who are parents, like if, if you're a single, you know, on a, you know, unattached person going all in and then being like, oh, that didn't work. I'm going to go back and get a job, you know, asking, would you like fries with that is a whole different ballpark than kid, than a child mortgage wife, you know, all that That's, you're in a whole different um, ballpark. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was setting the stage in place. And um, having a, you know, also having, having a fallback plan, you know, it's like, it's one of those things like, I'm a good boy scout, always be prepared, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, it's always being prepared that there is that backup plan. And also having things along the way that you know, that um, can, you know, produce revenue to offset what you're doing and things like that, as well. Like, um, it's one of the things Russell Brunson um, says when you in some of his books is that, you know, you don't have to be a master of everything. You need to be a mat, you know, have skills in something because if you aren't an expert in it, you still need to know a little bit about it, but know enough when to hire them. So to mm -hmm. have, you know, so like he used the example of he's really good at yard, he's horrible at programming. He's great at yard work. He would do yard work and then pay the programmer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and doing things like that, like to get it, um, get things going. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because I still do, do some moonlighting, you know, with, some edu with education and stuff like that to, off, you know, to get things, you know, where they need to be. But along the same lines, you have to have a vision for what you want. So many people don't operate with a vision. You know, like right here next to me is my vision board. And I, I'm not one of those like super mindset guys. You know, I'm I have to do all these visualizations every morning of what I'm doing and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. I tried it, it just wasn't for me. But like a vision board for me is definitely 
it, it works is it's right here next to me. I got to, you know, I have to look at it in its face every day and it keeps yeah. you, you know, going mm -hmm. with those. And that, that helps us too when you're, when you're going all in, because if you're looking at a mountain of things to do, building your tribe, building your content, building, you know, lead magnets, um, actually building the course. Um, and that's, that's my biggest, um, you know, burden for me is that being an educator, I'm one of the few people out there that has literally had well over a decade of experience designing technical courses and content. It's never good enough. And mm. um, as Kevin David would, would say, um, what is it? I imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Mm -hmm. that was one of the quotes he, he likes to use. And I firmly believe that. And I'm having to like get in that mindset of also, particularly when you burn the boat or you at least, you know, kick it offshore really hard. Um, you, you got to, you know, you need to you need to make some action happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So how do you get that done? Because that what you said is one of the things I think a lot of people struggle with um, and are afraid of. Post-its? Hundreds of them. <laughs> no lie. It's how I operate. Um, I'm glad it, I it, see you then. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, literally, I got, let me put it this way. This is how I buy post-it notes. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's because for me, it's part of the mindset of getting things done. Okay. Um, it, it's if I write it down on there, first of all, there's a lot more, there's, there's a lot of psychological research that of actually physically writing it, you are more likely to do it. And when you are, when you do it, um, actually that physical writing is part of what we call in the industry differentiation. And mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go, um, teacher geek on you for a second go ahead, um, is, Differentiation when you're instructing is basically when you um, engage more of your modalities of learning. So, for example, you know, mm -hmm. when you interact with something and you actually physically do it as kinesthetic, when you see it, it's visual, when you hear it, it's auditory, um, you know, and there's some other people that have said some other things. But those are really the big ones. And so writing it is a kinesthetic thing. I'm seeing it and I've talked about it with somebody or, or I'll even say it out loud. Okay. It's now committed to my memory more. Mm -hmm. And then there's a mental thing of going, taking that off the wall, you've done it, bring it over, doing it. I finished it, crumpling it up and throwing it in the trash can. There's a mental, there's an empowering thing there. And um, to design the course, I do actually have to give a shout out um, for this of throwing all the ideas out there in a brainstorm to, um, to a fellow um, content creator, um, and I just drew, do an absolute blank on his name. Um, right. I'll think about it in a second. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's one of those things like you're sitting there and you're going, you had it in your head and then gone. Um, you know, and he was using that as well when he was writing his last book of just throw all those ideas out there. Mm -hmm. um, because being a teacher, I talk a lot, you know, like I'm not even like with the book I'm writing to go along with my course, I'm actually typing very little of it. I'm actually dictating most of it mm -hmm. um, because it's also a lot more efficient for the way I, you know, I want it to be more of a conversation with my reader, not a, a textbook. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read enough textbooks. I don't need to write one for okay. somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. So you hang... You how does that work? Just so I can wrap my head completely around it. You got your post-its, you're thinking about ideas yeah. and you start writing it one-on-one -on -one, or is it like you're working on something, you get an idea, you write um, it and you, how do you, how do you systemize well, that? Well, like, for, like, for example, um, here, I'll show you one is like, I'll start out with some of like my bullets, for example, All right. like the, the main pieces of what I'm doing. And then I'll do, you know, the bullets of different pieces of, of the pie, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak. So like this particular um, unit, I'm, I'm dividing mine into sort of weeks because okay. content creation takes a serious amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly when you're building a course, you need to build it logically. So, um, you know, and even, even when you're, even when you're building out a content plan, because really this book is about anybody who's trying to build, you know, content. Um, for it, whether it be a course or anything really, um, is I, I'm div dividing it out. So it's like over a week. So each one of those is a day in the week. So mm -hmm. what I do is I, as I start with that and then I go into, I'll take each one of those bullets and I'll go ahead and research it. Um, so for example, um, 
like with this, I, you know, finding inspiration for, from others, you know, is I'll, I have a, I'll go in and find, like, look up resources for, um, you know, modern researching techniques from social media or mm -hmm. um, like, for example, that's also going to include, because I'm, I'm an academic, you know, finding actual vetted sources. Because that's what a lot of courses, particularly if you buy one, you know, buy them from somebody who is, you know, a regular content developer, they're not doing that. And that's important for validity, you know, to actually say like, hey, somebody who's an academic has been doing this for a while agrees with you, you know, is I'll do all that. I'll go ahead and print that out and then I'll do the content for it. So mm -hmm. I'll take the next post it off. I'll do all that. You know, it's basically like each one of those post-it notes is like homework of different things I have to do. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. That's a, that's a great system. Um, and I think it's helpful. It's I funny. Think. It's the most non-technologically forward thing from a technology teacher, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why I got so interested in it. I'm like, I got to know how you do that. Yeah. I think it, also it, it works. I mean, that, that's the yeah. thing is I, I've tried, I've tried so many, bits of software for this from um i mean if you name it i've i've tried it you know i've mm -hmm. tried google keep it's good for just you know bits of data like if you're just like oh that's a good article that's it but not to organize your materials mm -hmm. it just gets lost in there i've tried doing spreadsheets in google mm -hmm. doc i've tried um evernote um you know you you name it which that, that was a software that went like up everybody was using it then like Where's Evernote? You know, that was one of the things like, boop, gone. Yeah. Um, which I know it's still out there. I know some people still use it, but I think they got mm -hmm. they got kind of gobbled up by the users with Keep and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, it for me, that's just one of those things. Like, I also keep a lot of, um, when I'm working, like flip chart paper, so I can write it out nice and big, put it together, you know, mm -hmm. do do brainstorms, do mind maps, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're really good for instructing too. You know, if you're doing video content, you want to show somebody something, you know, you can, it's big enough that you can take a big old chisel tip marker and, you know, on a camera like this, it's going to show yeah. um, very well. So that's part of the, you know, part of it as well. Absolutely. No, I, I, I understand. When I think about it, I, I, I got whiteboards. I got two whiteboards. I write everything on it. Just also for the case, yeah. I, I keep hearing it more and more people saying like, oh, I couldn't do anything for a day because there was no internet. I'm like, what? Well, they didn't have a, they don't oh, have a, I got a box of stuff for weeks, man. Like, exactly. It's like, yeah, books, that's like the thing. Eating, writing. Yeah. Uh, you know, read to them, write, let, you know, art, yeah. make some music, you know, things like that. Have, you know, play some music for them. You know, like that, that's the thing with my son is that like, and it's something I got it. I have to really give my mom credit for is that, she, you know, working with my son and remembering from when I was a child is that she would always have something to do. Mm. And it was always something, at least at the end, had a little bit of something that was knowledge. And it really ingrained in me and we're doing with my son that learning is not a negative thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, for at least here in the States, it's just become such a you know, bore for so many students because mm -hmm. the only thing they're really thinking about it are the tests that go yeah. along with those standardized tests and, um, you know, the, you know, absolute systematic way of doing it opposed to learning should be fun and it should be engaging. Mm -hmm. It should not be taxing. It should be a joy. Mm -hmm. And not everything you're going to want to learn is fun. You know, even today, you know, I'm like, you know, I, to, to me, certain things are just not enter, entertaining to me, you know, but you have to learn them, but it's knowing how to separate those things that learning can be fun. You know, sometimes it won't, but the majority of the time it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, absolutely. People start learning to do a test and just get a good grade on a test instead of learning. Yeah, and, or, yeah. and that's my bane of my existence, you know, be, from being a teacher, um, my content area was an oddity in that we actually didn't have very many standardized tests, if any. Some of the mm. classes I didn't. Um, and it was such a liberating experience. And But it was also one of those things I realized I was having to fill in the gaps for students' knowledge. Like, I was like, okay, you're like 18 years old. I'm having to teach you how to like fill out the address on an envelope. Ooh. You know, <laughs> like, what? You know, it's like you can repair a screen on a cell phone. Sitting at your desk, 
with a paper clip and a prayer, but you can't figure out how to address an envelope. You know, there's like really weird gaps on things, you know, mm -hmm. and like when I was teaching construction to students, like just those learning things, I had some students that had no idea how to actually use a screwdriver. Wow. None, you know, and because they, because their parents didn't give those teachable moments or didn't want, or as parents didn't want to let the armor down going, you know what? I have no clue, but we're going to learn it together. I mean, I remember plenty of times, like part of being a dad is going, you know, Hey, I, I don't, I really don't know how to do this. Like, but you know what? I know who does, or I know where to get that information. And then we're going to learn together. Uh -huh. And people are so afraid to let that armor down of learning together. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Right, our ego is in the way. We yeah. show. Oh, totally. It's like your your child isn't going to think any less of you because, or your student or whatever that because you didn't know how to do it. I mean, I, I would be in. I mean, think about this. How intimidating this is. I'm sitting in front of a room, of twenty students, and they ask me a question, and it's like my classroom is literally like getting you know, question just shot at you, because none of them have had any of this stuff before. Mm -hmm. I mean. And most of the time I had the answer, 99% of the time I did, but there's always that one where you're like, Ooh, to Google we go. And you know, like one student wanted to know how to do so many video editing. I'm like, I've been doing this for a decade. I've worked with filming TV shows and everything like that. I've done corporate filming. No clue. No, <laughs> let's figure this out. And you know, same thing when you're doing woodworking or something like that. It's like, and and it can be a, and it can be such a fun thing too with being being a dad you like go. you know hey you know, this this didn't work you know or you know be vulnerable it's okay mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely but what you said yeah it's fun just make it fun like ooh daddy doesn't have the answer let's together figure out how can we find out the answer exactly. what what can we do to find out the answer right and this yeah. is what I like about kids is they can come up with some crazy stuff mm -hmm. right that you didn't think about exactly. and man, i think kids are our greatest teachers but you know maybe, oh, yeah. maybe. well i think they i think you 100 agree with you on that um is that they are because the great educate don't ask the question they just provoke the question mm -hmm. they educate you enough to find the answer but they don't give it to you you know, that, that's like one of the best things that like, you know, I started doing with a lot of my students is I'll say to them that, you know, we're going to be learning about this and I'll just tease them enough with the information that they get interested. But I've at the very beginning set the bar on how to find the answers. Mm -hmm. So they know how to find the answers. It's just on them to locate them. Mm -hmm. So I'll, you know, like with my son, like I'll say to him, like, okay, this is why don't we try to find the answer? And I'll actually, even at four, I'll still like, hey, let's look at this online. Let's, let's try to find it, you know, those types of things. And it can be so liberating to, to know where to find those answers without actually knowing it. Because like what, one of my fa favorite things to do is like they'll sit there and they'll ask me a question like, oh, let me think about it for a second. You know, and I'll walk around. And all of a sudden I'll come back. I'll give them the answer. Like, oh, how'd you know that? I looked it up. Exactly. <laughs> Good, you know, Google it now. Google yeah, it now. Exactly. Because I mean, think, think about it. in the modern world, you, no civilization in the history of this planet has had the amount of knowledge at your fingertips. And not even if you know how to answer, ask the question to, to Siri or Alexa or whatever you want at immediate, um, not at immediate disposal. It's amazing. And people won't use it. Yeah, exactly. But also on the same line, I will say this, is that it is also now very cluttered. And that's mm -hmm. part of the reason why, you know, the the knowledge economy is growing so much is that once you do find somebody you respect, you can, for a very nominal fee, get all of their knowledge in one shot. You're not having to sift through it for days and hours and then have something that's wrong come back and then it takes you even longer. Mm -hmm. So that, that's part of it. And that's something I, I so agree is that, you know, people are like, well, why are these people charged for courses? Why is this charge? It's like, because the you're getting what you pay for otherwise. You're getting somebody who doesn't have that knowledge or didn't take the time to, to develop it correctly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that for me is one of those big pushes is, you know, 
understanding what what the value of that is there. And if so, honestly, if you, if you don't compensate for them, they're not going to be able to produce the best stuff for you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, and since we're talking about Russell Brunson, right? I think it was him who said in that book, those who pay, pay attention. I think yeah. that's the point as well. So. Oh, 100%. Like, mm-hmm. that, I, I can tell you right now, you can see the engagement level right away if the, the person's having to pay for it. And if the person is realizing the monetization that happens, if somebody realizes it's free, they value it with that same amount is that it is free. <laughs> And for, um, for me, it's one of those things, and it is definitely one of those, um, sort of curses of being a teacher is that particularly, um, and I'm going to have to say, because I haven't taught outside the States is that at least Mm -hmm. here is that there is a definite, if you aren't imparting your knowledge, guilt associated with it, that you should be giving as much of your knowledge as possible, but ultimately you know, nobody is working for free. So if you're, you know, like, you know, I'm not going to my school and teaching for free. Mm-hmm. A college professor is not instructing his class for free, you know, and nobody who's imparting a serious, a serious amount of knowledge is really on any scale working for free. And when you're, you know, developing courses and um, things like that, you, you know, should compensate the person for that um, offset of your income or time because mm-hmm. the thing is time is money so if you can for you know a no- nominal fee take days of research or even months and just give it to them in one shot that's also value to you past just making money or you know compensating you in some way and that's mm-hmm. that's something as well that you know that's part of the pay to play thing is that you're going to value it you know it's like if you're paying for school or if you're paying for um you know anything else you're you know trust me when you're an adult and you're paying for classes oh you go to class yeah exactly you, know, you, you figure it out you're like oh i oh i have the plague i'm still there you know it's like you know i'm not skipping class to go you know hang out at the pool or the beach or something like mm-hmm. you know, my butt's in that chair yeah exactly I hear you. Uh, let me share this real quick because i there we go i didn't share that before just for the people that are live right now this is josh brown's official Facebook page. So check it out. It's in the comment section. You can just click on the link, and check it out while you listen to us. Um, while we continue, make sure that you click on the middle yeah. button. So it opens up a new, <laughs> a new screen. Anyway, I will continue because I got another question for you. Um, yeah. What does the word dadpreneur mean to you? Um, I think it's being a, an ethical father and entrepreneur. And um, I think it's some, somebody who's not only engaged in their own business practices, whether it be a full-time entrepreneur or somebody who is, you know, has a side hustle, mm-hmm. you know, that, that also, I mean, the person might be a full-time entrepreneur, but if you're getting the business license and you're putting in the hustle and creating revenue from it, you're an entrepreneur and, you know, you may not own a, you know, like they, so the, people like to split hairs in certain industries that it's not a business or an intermediary and stuff like that. As far as I'm concerned, if you're advertising for it, you're putting in some sort of effort and you're building and scaling, you're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. To, to me, that's just where it is. It's splitting hairs otherwise. And also realizing you have to be a dad. And so many people will just sit there and grind it out and not spend any time with their kids. I cannot stand that. That to me, if you want to lose me as someone who has respect for you as a entrepreneur and a father, tell me you work 80 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I I have zero time for you because that time with your child is so much more valuable than the money. You know, you do need to teach them a work ethic, you know, like that's the reason why you got all these crazy, you know, Instagram famous kids running around in their, you know, Ferraris and stuff because they've never, they've never worked a day in their lives. They don't respect it. If they see your work ethic and particularly if you can show, excuse me, cough here, um, you can show them that work ethic. That is so important that, you know, both my parents had an amazing work ethic, but made time and also made it very evident that that time was super important. Mm-hmm. And you know, unfortunately, particularly to young entrepreneurs, and I, I'm going to 
caveat this and say I'm not throwing shade at this person or anything like that. But like to me, the amount of time like the Gary V's and stuff like that do of that constant grind it out, you know, showing them work ethic by, you know, how much they're working. It's like, but if you're never there, what good is it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, you might have a hundred million in the bank, but my son is worth more than that. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. I would rather, you know, I, I would prefer to live in a nice big house, drive a, drive a nice car, go on a vacation a whole bunch of times a year fully. But if it was no time with my son and a yacht or one bedroom and I take the bus and my son, I'm going to take the one bedroom and my son all day long. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and so many people forget that that hustle is, it, it should have a point. It, you know, and, um, you know, the amount of money you make does not necessarily directly represent um, your income or is your um, your personal well-being. It just doesn't. Exactly. Yeah, there's got to be some sort of balance where everything, not as everything gets the same amount of time, but everything definitely gets the same amount of conscious mm -hmm. effort. Yeah, and yeah and I'm not saying flush your whole work you uh -oh. know, because you become a dad. No, no. You know, hey, you got bills to pay and everybody should have a work ethic, you know, in there, there's a lot of in and not only that it can be work ethic, you know, and if you are a also, you know, a, you know, somebody who a parent who's staying at home or something like that, you're still teaching work ethic of keeping that keeping, you know, things rolling at the house and, mm -hmm. you know, keeping things going because that, that also has its place. It also has its value in work because not all work is necessarily a paycheck at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there can be a lot of very fulfilling things that are otherwise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, you can hustle and grind just in small increments. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to know when to cut it off. And also you got to know when to uh, set that alarm clock a lot earlier. Cause that, that's what I did as I was like, I realized, you know, setting this business up and getting it going was starting to, impede on some of the time I wanted to spend with my son and my wife. And mm -hmm. because as a, as a dad, you know, having that time with the family and your wife and, you know, making sure also they spend time with the extended family and date nights and all those things are important for the family dynamic. And I was like, you know what, it's time to start getting up. It was off at 5 AM. I know he gets up a couple hours after it. And then I use the morning to you know grind it out and you know i'll sacrifice some of my sleep and some bags under the eyes to make the vision happen for a short period of time to still enjoy that time with him exactly yeah be intentional with the time that's given every day exactly I like last post-it notes mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good man um what is one of the challenges that you've come across uh, as a dad when you're having to raise and spend that time with your kids, with your kids, sorry. Well, the, the biggest thing is, um, the biggest thing is knowing when to turn it off. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for me, my greatest power in that is uh, my wife. She is, she's my, my check. She's like, okay, we need, you know, cut it off for a little while, you know, because I, I'm one of those people that when I get in the grind of doing something, Mm -hmm. I can be there for hours just wanting to do that. Or, you know, my attention deficit kicks in and I'm like, I keep going away from it, coming back, going away and coming back. So it takes a little bit longer. And she's definitely my balance of like, you know, okay, we need, you know, hey, mm -hmm. you know, let's go out to lunch. You know, one of those things like, you know, break it up for a minute. And, you know, that those types of things. And particularly right now, she's been my rock because I haven't put more time into you know, getting things going and just the logistics of all of this. I mean, just getting all these pieces going. I mean, my, my ultimate vision is, um, you know, a year, a year from now be completely 100% self-sustaining when we're doing this. That's a big order. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that is. And, you know, as I was talking to a, um, Akbar and a couple of other people like that is, you know, my goal is I want to be known as the, the go-to guy for, you know, my, my areas and it, it takes time to grind that out. It takes time networking with people, you know, and it just, unfortunately there's no speed pass for that part. You can't, you can't hire Fiverr for that. You know, <laughs> it doesn't work. I tried, I looked, it's not on there. You know, not on there. 
right, so save me time. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I looked. You know, checked up work too. Not there. Not there. Not there, not there either. Anybody we're, knows where the speed pass to wealthy entrepreneur Fiverr offer or Upwork is? Please go ahead and DM me. It. I'd yeah, love to know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You can pay send, one, send one to class too. Yeah. <laughs> send to that guy. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you, man. But there are so many out there that sell that, you know, speed pass. Yeah. And any of them, like, and, and anything, even with the things that are little shots of quick money here and there, I mean, they still take time. I mean, um, it just really, really is something that, you know, you look at these occasional unicorns that really just, I mean, they knock it out of the park or just are, have that absolute, you know, insatiable work ethic that, you know, for most people that are particularly dadpreneurs, you know, or, you know, even mompreneurs or anybody else, anybody has a kid in the equation or are trying to also be a good spouse, you mm -hmm. know, it's really hard to hit that level of grind on stuff and still not let the other side down. So it takes a little bit longer. You know, if I had just me, I would be spending 16 hours a day just crushing it, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, drinking Red Bulls and protein shakes at my desk and just blah, 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 going crazy. But that doesn't work if you're not just, you know, one person in a room doing it or, you know, those types of things. It just doesn't, no, just doesn't pan out. You'll end up alone real fast. <laughs> yeah, and a, and a kid that hates you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah not and not doing everything that. Everything is out of balance. See, that's the thing that we got to understand as entrepreneurs is that you know you you got to have that vibe with your kids. You got to you got to have the connection. It yeah. feeds you, right? Because because I was talking about this the other day, especially because this was a, an international keynote speaker and that's an author, and he was traveling. Um, especially in the beginning a lot and not just one day, but just yeah. five days, six days on end. And I was asking him like, you know, what about guilt, right? What about the guilt of you being away from your kid? How do you deal yeah. with that? And he actually didn't have an answer. He's like, yeah, just first day is okay. Second day, yeah. third day, that's where it gets really hard. And that's where the guilt comes in. And actually he said, to be honest, there is no answer for that except being really, oh, we get, we're getting visitors, people. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> Ah, you gonna give me a kiss? Bye bye. Hey, buddy. Don't shoot him. I'm like, what did I do to you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Stop shooting. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Come on. On the bed. Yeah. 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 You, you shut dad. it up. Hashtag dad life. Yeah. So thanks for being on the show. J Josh is no longer with us. Give me a kiss. Love you. Come on. Hello. Let's go. Say bye bye. Say good night, Josh. Good night, Josh. Josh, good stuff. Josh. Take your, take your breath. Thank you. Josh. It's past our bedtime. Yeah, it happens. My, my, my little guy's had on all sorts of like crazy like schedule. He's just he's he's one of those night owl guys. Like he just oh no no it, it's it's fine with me because like. Mm. He he get, it wakes up later, so it's like oh, it's okay. one of those yes. that like he just he just yes. he doesn't need as much, he doesn't need as much sleep as a lot of really little like a kid his age normally would. He, All right, yeah. So it's that, fun. that's awesome. So get two and then figure out that one can go to bed late, but will always wake up around six o'clock. Always. Yeah, that, that's fun. That's like, dude. I, I need some time. <laughs> I need I need yeah. to have time for a little bit but he's good because yeah. he actually does stuff with me now so we start yeah. doing yoga together and stuff like that so you oh, know that's awesome it, yeah kind of work yeah, yeah exactly i tried doing meditation with my little guy last night yeah didn't work out so well um we're, we're working on it it's it's a it's a work in progress yeah exactly yeah. meditation is a whole different ball game yeah it, he, uh we were, we were working on that like we're doing it and he's like you know and and i was telling you know we had him on the you know i was sitting on the floor on a, on a had and, I, and he was the same okay you know we're walking through he's like he just looks at me dead in the face deadpan opens his eyes he goes i don't like meditating all right just absolute deadpan i'm like 
okay, can we try it again? No. No. I'm <laughs> like, okay. You know, I figure we'll try it again sometime soon. Just he he was in a little bit of an honorary mood. It was it was pretty funny. It was like absolute just like not whining, just like I don't like meditating. Yeah, exactly. Hey okay. man, appreciate your honesty. Yeah, as like I said, no filter, toddler. Exactly. Maybe next year. Yeah, no, a try cosmic kids. They got some meditation and stuff in there as well, some sense stuff. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And it's it's formed into a fun game stories, right? Oh, cool. So it's yeah. uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, my, my son loves it. Pokemon yeah, and, and Spider Man stuff, Star Wars, uh, and he makes a story out of it doing all the sh- movements and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, no, I've definitely look at that. That's cool. Thanks. <laughs> so I got a short. I'm looking just so people know. I'm looking at my my topics, and, and we're we're going dive. We've different dive, dive so far in way other topics that I wanted to talk about, which is awesome. However, now I got to shift a little bit. Like, what other topic do I still find interesting right now to make sure that we 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 cover? Now, let me talk about this because I did something really cool. I'm, I made some vegetable hamburgers today because my son. Are not very good at particularly eating their vegetables, right? I think that's the basic parent problem. So share with me, remember, because you're in that journey where he's got to learn the new foods, right? What's your strategy, approach, however you want to call it, with your wife to make sure that you know he gets to create a good habit of eating healthy? Uh, my kid's kind of a unicorn. Um, you're not going to like my response on this. Um, my kid right. is not a picky eater at all. Uh uh-huh. um, he um from the very beginning when we had him because um we had so many friends and if they're watching this uh, I'm sorry um that had <laughs> super picky eaters like I'm uh-huh. I'm talking like really bad like you know it had to be the only thing these kids were eating was like chicken nuggets and french fries and stuff it was the only thing they'd eat you know stuff like that just you know, and every kid goes through like a little something of just it doesn't work, particularly when your taste buds are developing and all as a kid and they shift, you know, and things taste, particularly with little kids, they can taste sweeter or saltier or whatever and hits different taste buds. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like when we saw that, my wife and I are both like, well, we don't want to do that. So we immediately from the very beginning had him. He would always have to try it and give an honest opinion. It was something my mom did with me. Mm-hmm. was if even if you don't like it you should at least try it and we did and we did that from the very beginning okay you, you have to at least try it and um we would always talk it up and it is a f- absolute firm unnegotiable rule when when you're around my child and food is you never give your opinion on it mm-hmm. you never go ooh i don't like that or whatever and because that is a non-negotiable because then it puts your because kids will go on your opinions on stuff. So nope. for me, it's like he eats some stuff I don't particularly like. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I'll just say to him, Oh, I don't think I don't feel like having that today. I'm like, oh, okay. And just like um, I just know one thing in particular, he just he has a very reaction to us. He just does not like spicy foods. And mm-hmm. I'll say, like, hey, this is spicy. Do you want to try a little teeny bit of it? And he'll occasionally go, Yeah, I'll have that. If it's a really wild swing of flavors, you know, I don't force it. But if it's a new vegetable, if it's a new protein or whatever, we eat mo- we eat mostly vegetarian around here. So like, um, you know, we do a lot of cheeses and stuff. Like, oh, try that one, and, and he'll he'll eat almost everything. We travel quite a bit, um. So when we're on the road, like he has to. Like that's the thing. Yeah. So that that's that's how we've done it. That's awesome. No, that's actually a good tip for, for parents starting out. Just make sure that your kid at least, yeah, turn that into a habit of saying, like, look, something's new. You've got to at least try it. Yep. And no matter what, we always roll the meals. We never do, like, whatever a day is something. Because, like, my son's never been um, a schedule. Like, he's not a mm-hmm. schedule kid. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and each, and each parent finds their own thing. We, we found that for us, the amount of traveling we do, special events, things like that. If yeah. we had a scheduled, like super regimented along with the meals and stuff, it would never work. So mm-hmm. I think that also has helped it where it's not consistent. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, we in the beginning, and that's going on through the healthy eating, we started mm-hmm. saying, like, okay, yeah, you, you must finish your plate, right? If you want dessert, you must finish your plate until... I interviewed someone and he said, 
but how is your kid supposed to learn that he's full if you're forcing him mm -hmm. to finish the meal because you know he wants some dessert if he's full or not he wants some dessert anyway he's gonna yeah. eat so you're forcing him and he, he's never gonna learn and we stopped it and i thought i thought that was a, a great tip mm -hmm. right one of the ones we do is we don't do dessert at home all right that works never, never um first of all i have the world's worst metabolism okay that's the, the reason why um and the other reason was is then it becomes a special occasion you know mm -hmm. and um he can have at will as much fruit or vegetables as he wants whenever he wants. Like if he's hungry, mm -hmm. I mean, he'll even in the morning when he's hungry, like put a carrot right to the face and just like gone, <laughs> you know, things like that. And for me that, you know, setting sort of those things in play was very early on mm -hmm. um, to try those textures and things like that. And, um, you know, the kid, just like any kid, they have a sweet tooth. They naturally want to have sweets it's part of their, you know, it's part of the old, you know, cro you know, mental thing of the kid, you know, sugar equals growth. Growth is good, you know? Yes. And, um, so for us, we, you know, we, we've kept the, the desserts out of the house for the, for the most part, you know, mm -hmm. on rare occasion, you know, we'll have, have a little something, but it's, it's not a daily occurrence. So that's good, man. But not that far yet. <laughs> it's Oh, and, and that's what they're saying. Like it's ideas, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like, I, I love to share ideas with parents, but I always hate the, the even thought that there's some sort of guilt tripping with it too. Uh -huh. Like, you know, like that parental guilt thing that comes along with asking for ideas and stuff. Like, you know, that, that, that to me, you should help, you should help raise each other up as dads, not get, you know, give opinion. Cause also every kid is different. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. Notice that in my house, my two sons are wow. <laughs> I cannot treat one the same way as the other one. It will be a complete no. exploding house. But it would um, be a disservice to them too. As well, thing. Which yeah. I, you know, and that's like you see the parents that that will you know treat both kids the same. That's just wrong. It's not. Mm -hmm. You gotta you know you gotta analyze your child. You gotta know what works best for them. You gotta make you, and you gotta celebrate them in their own way mm -hmm. absolutely yeah that's great parenting advice and especially what you mentioned even if you have one you got to keep trying new things to see okay what is yeah. working but trying is the key but like sometimes we just get so frustrated like you know what i give up he can have his way right but it's so important to just keep going i mean i keep reading some of these great guys out there and they're just writing like I am not a good parent or I'm not a good dad or whatever, but I'm trying. I'm thinking like, dude, man, as long as you're trying, yeah. you're the most amazing father out there yeah. for your kid. Right? You, know the, you know the dad that's not do, doing, not being a good dad? The one that's not showing up and mm -hmm. in, in, in doing his part in being a dad. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need to show up and, and put it, you got to put in the work. You know, it's like nothing good comes from not from a free pass. You know, it's, you know, it takes work. It takes, you know, it takes time, it takes experimenting and, you know, you're not going to win every time, you know, it's, you're, you're not, you're not going to hit a home run every single time. You know, I, 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 I already struck out at least three or four times and it's, you know, four o'clock today. Yeah, exactly. You know, but you just keep swinging. No, absolutely. You're going to make mistakes and fail. What, what does that mean to you, man? What does failure and making mistakes mean to you? Learning. All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Quickest answer you had all day, right there. Absolutely, I didn't even get that quick, quick an answer for my mic. <laughs> no, that, that's fair enough. I mean, Keep it that I mean, way. I, think I, I mean, when, when you when you fail, you learn. It, it, it's mm -hmm. that simple. There's there's no the only time there's harm in it is when you fail because you didn't do your job well enough, mm -hmm. and it hurts other people. That, that's the mm. only time it's not a learning experience. You didn't you didn't prepare well enough. So like if you if your weld fails and the ladder falls and somebody dies, that is not a learning experience. That is you didn't do your job right. If mm. it is you know your meal nobody liked and you had to order a pizza, that's a learning experience. You need to work work on your cooking. You know it's like it, it's all it's it's a learning thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I like that experience about food. I try to make those what I told you earlier did. Vegetable hamburgers and it took forever 
I didn't coordinate it right, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna chuck this one up with the with the learning experience. I got to start yeah. out here. Oh yeah, it's it's hard to get the veggie burgers right, man. That's that that is very hard. Actually, I just shoot, I needed to plan better, but it was actually it's quite easy. It, it's working out because I'm doing it in the oven, and the oven is oh, doing yeah. it to make it nice and 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 for make it into a hamburger. And I learned the first time that that was the learning mistake. The first time I did it in in the in the frying pan. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it doesn't have the same level of. Uh, they look body. like scrambled eggs. Yeah, exactly. They were scrambled eggs. Kids still loved it, so it was like, okay, this was a a, a mis- you know a, a happy accident. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The kids are still eating it. So I was like, it's like I don't want to win, but it was still a Throw enough toppings on it, they won't notice. Exactly, exactly. No, no, and they loved it. I mean, it's uh, I'm sharing. I went live today to share it because I'm like, look, I think every single kid doesn't like festivals. This is my trick. I hope it works. But again, it's what you said, right? Kids are all different. So yeah. some of them are like, you know what? For me, this is not working. I don't like, I still don't like this. Yeah. It's like the last cruise we went on, like the way the, um, the two servers at our table. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, as most most American kids, you know, they, they do, um, you know, the kids menu and they walk up and it's normally the usual kind of, you know, basic fare, burger, some sort of chicken nugget product and pizza and a couple of those things. And they come up and they go and with me, I'll just say, oh, we don't need that. And they give the kind of you know, he'll off the regular menu and, you know, the kids let, and they'll walk up and, and they'll say, what would you like? Oh, shrimp cocktail. And they're like, you know, okay. And he polished it off. You know, it's like, but along the same lines, the next day he just wasn't feeling it. And all he wanted was mac and cheese. Like kids also go between that, you know, it's, yeah. so you have to read your kid, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. and it's day to day and every kid's different. Mm-hmm. But apparently you've been teaching your kid from a young age already to make his own decision of what he wants, what he wants. Here. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that's honestly part of one of the things for him and his learning process is we always have let him pick what he wants to eat. We've never chosen it for him unless he just goes, "I don't know." Mm. You know, we'll we'll walk through a few things in the menu like we know he might like, or if it's something not, he doesn't know, we'll say to him like, "Hey, this is what this is. Do you want to try it?" Mm-hmm. You know, it's anything in the grocery store. Like, we'll walk through the fruits and vegetables. Hey, do you see a fruit or a vegetable you want to try? Oh, that looks fun. Okay, let's get one. We'll try it. Mm-hmm. You know, and if he doesn't like it, okay, it was a very cheap learning lesson. Yeah. You know, and if he does, I'll buy more. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's what I've noticed as well. It's like, as parents, we want to control so much of decisions that I guess have to make, that we make decisions for them. And then yeah. what we notice now, no, and again, in, in with the generation that we have right before us, it's like these guys can't make any decisions. It's like now they have to go yeah. out of the house, and it's like, dude, they, they don't know how to make their own decisions because it's all been made for them all their lives until they got out yeah. had to go out of the house. Yeah, uh, and, and around us, it's actually kind of a local like thing too. That in the part of the, you know, I'm I'm right in the middle of the eastern seaboard. I'm in I'm in Virginia, mm-hmm. and um the air and there's a lot of the culture around here too that a lot of the people don't understand, like allowing kids to have like an input on what they eat because there is like a lot of old tradition here. It's like whatever goes in your plate, you finish, like it, love it or not, mm-hmm. and it you put it away no matter where you are. It's it's an old it's an old um basically hospitality thing. Like if you don't mm-hmm. eat what's on your plate, it's an insult to the cook, exactly. you know? So like part of it is, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, it's like, well, we don't, we don't do that. Like if he doesn't like it, I'm not going to force it, you know, down his throat. Cause like so many of my friends are like, Oh my God, I hated my, all my food when they was growing up and they don't have a palate for it. So, you know, there is a ba- balance to it. You know, if they're being super picky, then you gotta be like, you got to at least try it. You know, that type mm-hmm. of thing. Next time. Love you, man. I appreciate it. Well, we got to an hour, and I told you I'll cut you off at 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, right. still, so you have 30 seconds. <laughs> exactly. That's that's all used to, to promote you a little bit more. Um, as I said before, all the people that are online right now, um, this is in the comment section. You can click on the link. For those of you listening to the replay on the podcast or watching this on YouTube as a replay, 
Um, this link is in the description section. You can click it on there. Plus, Josh, for all of those that have more questions like me or just want to follow you, get to know you even better, man, what are the best places to see your content, get in contact with you, connect with you? Um, yeah, really, the, the I interact a lot on um, Facebook. So if you want to find me at JK Brown Official right there, um, I also have a lot of um, content creation tips over on my YouTube channel, um, mm -hmm. which is the same. Everything I have is the same JK Brown Official. Um, you can go there. Um, and if you're looking at building out your marketing, um, I have a great uh, resource over there at jkbrownofficial.com. Um, we're still building out that page um, to get it just right um but it's it is live so if you want to check that out but uh we're still built um facebook and instagram as well you, you can hit me either place awesome man so for the people that were watching this in the replays everything will be in the descriptions and you can check it out there um josh thank you so much for taking the time for being on the show Appreciate hey thanks you. for having me here this has been a blast like, i did not realize that was an hour that quick <laughs> that's good man that's good glad to hear it everybody else thank you so much for being on i really appreciate you all and now i can say we'll be on again next week same time same channel i'll see you then take care bye, -bye. are you still meeting up with your friends now that your father kids making you stress out you got no time for yourself to work out read or relax can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends feeling energetic, happy and confident, spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com slash brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.